out. I like it. I like it. Okay, so normally for the guest intro, I give you guys a big, uh, a big spiel about all the things they've accomplished, but this is one of those that goes right to the heart. So um, what Denise is doing is something that you won't see on Harvard resumes, but you will feel. So that's why I wanted her to come onto the show. So I'm just going to get right into it. Let's give a round of applause to our next guest, Denise Taylor. Thank you for coming out. I appreciate it. Sure, my, my pleasure. Okay, so you are a weirdo, dressed like <laughs> craziness. Why, why are you doing this? I'm wacky. On okay. Wednesday, ordinarily, but for the support and love of downtown Las Vegas, I'm wacky on Thursday this week also. That's so right, right. An intervention of silliness in a world that's too stressed and serious is what Wacky Wednesday's about and a, a passion project that I'm about. Okay, so the first, so you came through Catalyst Week um, a little while ago, and you said that you noticed kind of some unique stresses in an entrepreneurial community like ours. Yeah. So tell us about those and... I what you noticed. pick up on energy, and and there's I could just feel the I don't know downtrodden or beaten. It I, it's palpable to me. Uh, <laughs> so when I feel the stress and the seriousness based on what I've been through in my life and and the secrets and the keys that I feel like I have, I want to share those so that the stress is not as much. And uh, I don't believe we're created to suffer and struggle. And I want to figure out and relay how I experience of life of joy and when a lot of people would think that I couldn't. Okay. Um, so we, a lot of us have businesses, a lot of us have small businesses and tech companies, and we have a lot of stresses, but none of them really compare to a stress you went through six years ago. So tell us about that. I'm a mother of five, so I know what stress is <laughs> from yes. their toddler ages to now my youngest is a teenager. So I get, I get my daily dose of stress pretty much. But six years ago, my oldest daughter was 12 when she was diagnosed with leukemia. And uh, no indicators, no precursors on how sick she was. And just like that, we were set then on this course. And I referenced an inner voice, but I had some wisdom come to me that the only way that she was going to get through it was to find the good when it was surrounded by bad, even if it was one small good thing to cling to it. And so what I share with people is I had like three years to earn my bachelor's in perspective. And I'd always been a perfectionist my whole life and that had created stress because I, my natural tendency was to find the one flaw or the one thing that was wrong when it was surrounded by so much that was right, but I wasn't experiencing how beautiful it was because I was focused on the wrong thing. So they say you're um, motivated by desperation or inspiration. Okay. And I was pretty desperate if it was the only way that she was going to make it to learn how to focus on the good when my natural tendency was to focus on something else. So I've become what I call a perspective trainer and that I can find the one good when a lot of people can't. They can see all of the bad or the wrong. And so the world's report is that my daughter lost her battle with cancer. So a perfect example of how I could find the good is that I lost the opportunity to share life with her in, in body on earth, but it's impossible for me to lose her and um, I want to teach that perspective so that we live a life of joy. Oh wow. Um, okay so you said you used like crossing the finish line like you said that you she may have lost her body but past the finish line. Like, so, so tell me how, how can I like get some of this perspective or what you were thinking in such a terrible time? Right so the world's report and a lot of our stressors come from what we're hearing around whether it's our co-workers our family the news definitely is inundated with a report that's focused on the negative or the tragic. And the world's report is that she lost her battle with cancer. And my report is I had the best seat in the house and I watched her cross the finish line of Victor. Her spirit was never defeated by the disease. She purposely set out with an intention every day to make the most of the gift of every day. But what I really witnessed in her was this selflessness where it was more about the greater good in everybody else than it was her. I mean, even at her young age, I didn't witness somebody that unless she did it behind closed doors, not somebody that hosted a pity party, not somebody that was angry and why me? It was just, it is what it is, and um, if I have limited time, I'm going to make the most of it. So, so tough, but so cool that you're doing it. So, I, I mean, every time like, you have a stress like, that comes into your life, do you, do you immediately feel the way we all do, and then does something kick in, and you're like, you know what, like, let's just get wacky? Oh, well, I only like, get wacky like on Wednesdays, but it, okay. it, but it is a perfect stress <laughs> reliever. <laughs> well, let me say, Wednesdays people and... that know me, and just like me getting up to go to the Denise that was it, I'm wacky every day of the week. <laughs> it's just I wear it externally on Wednesday. But yeah. I have stresses. I had an extremely stressful week last week, and um, 
Celebrating Wacky Wednesday is a way that I just get over myself and go do something for the sake of others. I'm not the only one stressed. I'm not the only one having a difficult time. I'm not the only one that wakes up that feels like I have an obstacle course or hurdles set before me through the day. And when I take the focus off me to go bless somebody else, it always shifts. And so then my, it's, I'm out lifting spirits, but it ends up lifting mine. And so Wacky Wednesdays is one way that I shift from the stress. So, um, and so tell me, so where did Wacky Wednesdays come from? Like, what's the origin? How did it, why, why is it Wacky Wednesdays, not just like de-stress whenever, you know? Right, well the school has Spirit Week where my kids go to school and they have a Wacky Wednesday. And we were going through a bone marrow transplant. We'd been in the hospital for three months. Our perspective um, was being challenged for sure. The spirit that I was used to for Janae, it wasn't that she was, uh, she was as tired. It wasn't that she was not having a right perspective. Her body was just wiped out. And so the light in her eyes was gone. Her energy was gone. And she got an email that she was missing Wacky Wednesday. And she was bummed about it. And I just suggested that we could get wacky wherever we are. And I asked her if she wanted to whack me out. And she lit up like and a Christmas tree. And you in the hospital? We'd morning? been in the hospital okay. for three months. Yeah. yeah, we were in the hospital. And she lit up. And I didn't have a closet full of wacky things. So she yes. took my yeah. eyebrow pencil. And she drew on a lovely unibrow. I don't know if you can see <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah, great. Um, and she blacked out one of my teeth. I didn't go that far tonight. And <laughs> she gave me some silly ponytails. And it was a really weird wacky. Um, and my husband wouldn't get off the elevator with me in the hospital. He didn't want people to know that we were together. <laughs> and um, it was just a, a wonderful diversion from the stress and the focus on the sadness and the sickness to create smiles with silliness. And it blessed us, and it blessed everybody on the floor, and it blessed people that I passed on the way to the cafeteria. And I just, uh, we collectively decided that we really needed something like that to look forward to, and that we were going to do it every week. And so we did it every week, and we had a dream together that we would get Wacky Wednesdays into children's hospitals across the country, and I haven't accomplished that yet. But um, because it's not just the kids and the families in hospitals who are stressed, I decided that maybe it would happen faster if I didn't go right at the hospital, but that I created an awareness <laughs> and a participation. I saw the photos from the airplane flight out here. I you flew had, out wacky yesterday. Because you, you flew out yesterday on a Wednesday. Yeah, and so whatever is on and my you wore schedule. This through the security. Similar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get. I wanted to change it up a little bit, and I do have quite an entourage of things to select from. But whatever's on my schedule on Wednesday, I'm all committed to um, create a Wacky Wednesday for everybody around. But my my vision now, um, if we see, not everybody's in Vegas that's able to be comfortable and wear jeans to work, right? So if you right. see somebody in a business environment wearing jeans on Friday, don't we all know what it is? It's right. casual Friday, casual Fridays, and yeah. you know that they've just worn jeans for the sake of themselves being comfortable. I think if we can do that, that because of how we do contribute to community, that Wacky Wednesday could be bigger than Wacky or Casual Friday ever was. That we will start seeing people wacky at the gas station or Sell at the a lot more products. Yeah, the, the stores will like it. Well, sure. Yeah. I know. I think I should partner with <laughs> you know, like Party City Christmas, or some yeah. accessory. I could be. Sure, where do you get your stuff? I. Yeah, I thought of that on the plane yesterday. Good. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I mean, Southwest saw should partner me too. Everybody thinks I work for Southwest. <laughs> because I saw on the photo, she got every. She you got you got the flight attendant to dress up. Like the people next to you, probably, I think you did, right? I carry a bag with wacky accessories, and so I ask people if they want to have a whack attack, and they're like, "What's that?" And I'm like, "I'm wacky all day, but you could be wacky for a few minutes. We could take a picture, and they just choose some things out of the bag." But, um, yeah, I, the flight yesterday was phenomenal. The pilots got wacky. The attendants oh, stayed pilots? wacky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was in the cockpit. Okay. They, somebody said they, hadn't, they didn't think that was even, but yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even legal? Especially yeah. if you're dressed like this, but yeah, um, like. I make it through TSA and everything quite fine. <laughs> I don't know. I think people just, um, I think everybody's starving and hungry for some smiles and some silliness and some de-stress and whether they know what I'm doing it or not. Not everybody, but um, a lot of people embrace the silliness and... Yeah, I'm ready. Can I go through a whack attack? Yeah, I'm ready, right here. Oh, okay. I brought you some choices. Okay, so I got I had a bag if anybody wants to put something like Is it a hat? That is a hat. Oh, okay. I wasn't quite sure what that thing was, really. But <laughs> yeah, I like that. Okay, and you just let them choose whatever they want, huh? Yeah, they choose, yeah, I didn't... I didn't know if those, those might go on with your head or may not. Yeah, they probably will. Or they will could go on the frog. The frog could wear them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so put on there. Did you feel the spirit lift right yeah, there? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I feel a lot better. You know, now that now when you do stupid things, you're like, yeah, I got the hat on. It's not well, that bad. I do. I've you know? got company now. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, so, yeah, well, that's <laughs> pretty, we have to eat. <laughs> Perfect. I said something Perfect. Else. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> that was a sharp one. That was a sharp one, Spadoni. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Okay, so, so tell me about this. this. I love this metaphor during our pre-interview, surprise party of life. This right. is what you're trying to create on every Wednesday. Have you, have you done oh, this I, every, every, every day. Wednesday? No, I do the Wacky Wednesday every Wednesday. Have you missed ones? In the last six years? Um, you know, I was telling them, even when I think I'm going to take a break and I'm going to just do one or two, it seems to snowball and not be possible for me not to be like, all in. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, once you get, yeah, I feel like putting more stuff. I wish I had a fake beard. I wish I, <laughs> right, uh, yeah. you just want I mean, to keep going, going with yeah. it. Yeah, it it's gets weird, like a weird. magnet yeah. with metal. Yeah. It doesn't, yeah, I exactly. You just want to hide under it all. Yeah. Well, so it's good. <laughs> yeah. um, but, okay, but tell me about this uh, surprise party for life metaphor. Because I this actually came up many times throughout the week, and I think that if the audience knew it, maybe it could be something they thought about. Too, right. So. Because I use metaphors that I think people can apply um, all the time. And Wacky Wednesday's the stress, the weekly stress reliever. But I have stress relievers for every day um, to replace your have tos with get to. You know, don't complain about the things that you have to do. Somebody would love to get to do them, and someday it'll be you when you can't do them anymore. So stay present and stay grateful, and um, don't complain about things that are actually blessings. And the metaphor is that life is throwing a surprise party for us. And if I were throwing a surprise party for you, you wouldn't get to approve the guest list. Nope, no guest list. I approval. would invite people That's, that you like wouldn't have invited, yep. right? Um, people will bring cool. gifts that you would not, you don't get to register just the gifts you want. So people are going to bring gifts that you didn't ask for right. and that you may never use or that you don't know what it's for. Sometimes you don't even like them. Exactly. Yeah. Life just gives you the gift and you say, oh. Right. I don't want that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but they, that the so the graciousness in it and the gratitude is to say thank you anyway. Right. Um, I would not have asked for leukemia. I would not have asked to let go of one of my children earlier than what my plan had been. However, I'm I'm so blessed by what I learned from her. And I heard somebody the other day, and I don't remember who it was, but they were talking about a loved one who had passed, and they said it was worth having her to lose her. And Dr. Seuss says, since we're talking about Wacky Wednesday, um, Dr. Seuss says, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. And some people will go their whole life and not experience what I did in a relationship with her. And so I smile because it happened, and I celebrate this every day as I live now. When guests show up that I'm like, I totally would not have invited you. I just say thank you. <laughs> I just say thank you and move on to the ones that I would. I mean, I tweeted the other day, if you're not enjoying Life Surprise Party, you're hanging out with the wrong guests. And that's what that's the truth. Like, if I was having a party for you and I invited you, would spend time with your friends and the ones that you would have invited. You wouldn't have been, you wouldn't be bogged down, and it wouldn't you wouldn't be pouting in the corner that somebody was there that you didn't want there. Right. Um, and and same thing with the gifts. And I believe everything is a gift. It's just not always wrapped in an attractive package. And so whether it's wrapped in pain or stress or just embrace it for the opportunity to grow and that there's something good in it if you will find it. And I'm here to prove and guarantee that if you want to find it, you can. I love it. Spreading the message. I, I love those photos of you at the airport. I love everybody who's talked to you. You just said so much about how you impacted their life. So that's why I'm glad you came to talk to the audience. But I want to, before we get, we're about done with the interview, but I want to talk about these wristbands. So you have a website, which is wegettoo.org, right? right? This is where people can follow. And then also Instagram.com, we get go. But tell me about what these wristbands that we all are wearing are. So they're the reminder because as, as inspired as somebody may be or the spirit lift that, I'm, that we may create in just tonight or in the week, I want it to last, but it's too easy to what I call fall asleep or to sleepwalk and to get out of that perspective that you're blessed or to forget that you're not enjoying the surprise party. And so the wristband is a reminder. It says I get to on it and it's got the website on it. So it's a good way for you to remember the website too. And I was actually in line. Everybody deals with lines and stress and traffic or waiting. And so even after I'd been through this three-year course with Janae in Perspective, I was waiting for a cell phone for my youngest daughter for her birthday. I'd procrastinated. It was a Saturday. It seemed like it was Christmas Eve. There were so many people in there. And I had been in there about an hour, an hour and a half. And I wasn't like worked up and being real nasty, but I certainly wasn't enjoying the wait. And I looked down and I saw my band. And I thought, you know, I've waited for my loved one to take her last breath. We waited for two and a half weeks after we brought her home knowing that she was getting ready to take her last breath. And, if, and I, was wait, I waited for that last breath with more grace and being more present to my blessings than I was for a cell phone. And oh, so gotcha. I right. feel like all of us, whether we're, whatever we're waiting for, 
there's something that's much more difficult, and I think that's a measure that I offer people, not for sympathy or anything other than to, again, use the perspective that it could be so much worse than waiting on this. And if you're focused on the result that you want, which is the blessing, then there are steps that you get to take, you know, and a wait may be one of them. Waiting at the airport is a breeding ground for me to share the get-to message when people <laughs> right. are worked up about waiting for delayed right. flights That's where or the cold waiting. comes from, too. It's a perfect spot, yeah. It's so, right. So it's perfect <laughs> to share that, you know, we want people go their whole life and don't know the thrill of a, a plane ride, and we're going to get to see the clouds from above instead of below, and we really need to, you know, just focus on what the blessing is and not what the burden is to receive it. That's awesome. All right, you think we should give her a cheers? You guys think? <laughs> Be good. All right.